All right, good evening. We are ready to begin our open session meeting. We were in closed session and just finished, came on out. And so uh, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Mr. Verdusco, could you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, uh, ne next is the approval of the agenda. I have uh, some changes um, under item nine, new business items B and C, director of uh, elementary and secondary education job descriptions. Um, the positions uh, have been updated to uh, include the change in the salary schedule. So what was printed online was the old salary schedule. So what um, the board has in front of them is the same job description, but with the new salary items um, corrected. And uh, those are currently online. So if uh, you need to look at it, would like to look at it, you can go online. And both of those uh, job descriptions have been posted. Under item 10, consent calendar item B1, report of certificated personnel, one appointment was inadvertently left off the original report. And uh, we have received a copy of the updated report. And it is also online for those of you that would like to download it and uh, check it out. Uh, Dr. Marshall, anything of uh, changes? No further changes. All right. With that, I need a motion to approve the agenda as pre uh, corrected or updated. Okay. Second. We got a motion by uh, Mr. Martinez, seconded by uh, Ms. Smith. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Carried unanimously. All right, thank you. Any member of the public that would like to have something uh, placed on our agenda uh, prior to uh, one of our board meetings, at least two weeks prior to one of our board meetings, uh, you need to submit that request to the superintendent for uh, approval to be placed on a future agenda item. Uh, members of the public that would like to make comments on any item that is on tonight's agenda, may do so uh, when that agenda item is in front of us. And they do so by approaching the podium right as soon as that item comes up. And uh, we ask you that you state your name. And then um, you have three minutes to give us your information. Uh, if there are multiple speakers on the same agenda item, the total time is 20 minutes for that. Um, if there are individuals here tonight that would like to um, address the board on any item that is not on tonight's agenda, you may do so by approaching the podium. Again, you'll have three minutes and 20 minutes total if there are multiple speakers on the same non-agenda item. With that, is there anyone here tonight that would like to address the board on item that is not on tonight's agenda? And I'd like to remind everybody, you do have three minutes. So good evening. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Renee Leonard. I'm the principal at Los Panas Elementary. Good evening. I'm Lupita Rivas, the assistant principal. And we wanted to personally invite you to our open house. Um, it is on Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. And it is actually an open house and a carnival. So we will be having a carnival from 5 to 7 and our open house will take place from 5.30 to 6.30. So I'll let Mrs. Rivas tell you a little bit about it since she's been working so hard on the planning. All right, so when Ms. Leonard introduced this to me, I said, well, I like to go extreme, I like to have fun. So our theme is carnival. We're gonna have tacos, we're gonna have churros, we're gonna have ice cream, lots of games, um, jump houses. And we partnered up with someone you guys can probably recognize, Diego, not Diego, um, Domingo Sandoval, he is great. He's helping us with this event. And we also like to thank um, Los Vanas High School. They helped us with some volunteers. We have some high school students who will be volunteering this, this special day. Thank you. Thank you. We have invitations for you, so we'll pass them over the... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Or you can just give them to Tina and she'll get them to us at the meeting, okay. at the end of the meeting. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. And we'll put on a calendar, but I will tell you that we already have three other things on our calendar for that night. It's the end of the year and there are no free days for anything. So we'll have to divide and conquer. All right. Thank you. That's great. Appreciate it. Um, any other persons that wish to address the uh, board on item, items that are not on tonight's agenda? All right, seeing no one come forward, we're going to start with our student representative report. And this is her last report. So the Los Banos Board Report School News. Prom was at, it was April 2nd at the Lopez Barn. LBHS had 324 students attend prom. The theme was floral ball. Students enjoyed the fact that prom was in town and close to home. Prom king and queen royalty were Adrian Delgado and Valeria Diaz. Two Los Banos High School students got recognized at the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society event held in Clovis. This is a huge accomplishment. Kyle Hurd and Warriors raised $182,438 for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. McKenna Silvera, Team Silvera, raised over $90,000 for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. On April 27th, Los Banos High School's Creative Writing Club attended Fresno State's Young Writers Conference. 19 schools attended with nearly 300 students participating who submitted creative writing ranging from poetry to fiction to creative nonfiction. Two Los Banos High School students were selected for, publish for publication in Fresno State's literary journal, The Spectrum. Jihad Alvarati received the, Sher the Shirley Ann uh, Williams Award for her poem, Evolving Colors, and was published. Olivia Reynoso received honorable mention for her short story titled Flowers, which was also published. Creative Writing Club's advisors and English teacher, Debbie Texera, won the San Joaquin Valley Writing Project Teacher Award for the teaching of creative writing. On April 2nd, LBJ, LBHS band performed at the championship competition for, center, for Central Valley Guard and Percussion uh, Circuit. Winter Guard won fourth place, and the Winter Percussion won second place. LBHS band, along with other bands in Los Banos, performed at the Band Stravaganza on April 7th. This event showcased the bands from LBHS, PHS, CJHS, LBJHS, and the elementary schools. It's also highlighted the high school and junior high Winter Guard and Winter Percussion groups. On April 9th, the jazz band performed at the festival at CSU Stanislaus. The students performed and received a clinic where a professional jazz music musician worked with the students to help improve their mus musicianship. Acapella choir and chamber singers participated in the first annual Merced County Honor Choir on April 9th at the beautiful Merced Theater under the direction of Mr. Paul Kimball, choral director of the University of Pacific and Lincoln Unified School District. Band performed at a ribbon cutting ceremony on April 21st to celebrate matches from joining the Chamber of Commerce. LBHS band performed uh, at the Mayday Fair. Marching band won second place. The Color Guard won first place in rifles and first place in ID unit. And the Jazz Band won first place. There were 400 student athletes this school year. 140 scholar athletes, students who, pay, who played at least one sport and maintained a 3.5 GPA or better first, second, and third quarter. There was also 40 Iron Tigers, students who participated in three or more sports. Albi's athlete, athlete director, Joe Barcelos, was presented with the Sue Camaraya Award at the State Athlete Directors Conference. This award is given for outstanding leadership and contribution to their school and athlete directors association. Six of LBHS's Seven spring sports qualified for, their pl for the playoffs, either as a team or with individuals moving on. Pacheco High School Board re Report. Prom took place April 1st with six buses lo um, loads of Panthers heading to Wolf Lakes in Sanger for the event. Jacob Lamone and Dreama Ma Maylander once were selected prom king and queen through voting on the Five Star app. Pacheco FFA finished a busy and successful fair. There was over 60 exhibitors show at the May Day Fair in Los Banos. Some highlights include the following Championship Goat Chapter Group, Reserved Champion Swine Group, 
Chapter Group, fifth place, Sheep. Chapter Group, Maya Madrano, third place, Advanced uh, Swine, Showmanship, Ty Strominger. Fifth place, Advanced Sheep, Showmanship, Emily Arellano. Fourth place, Advanced Go, Showmanship. The floral design class also submitted 18 arrangements to the floricature contest and came home with multiple first and second places. The annual FFA banquet will be May 18th at 5.30 p.m. in the cafeteria. We will be recognizing over eight, over 100 of our students and their accomplishments throughout the year. Throughout the, year. the PHS counseling team hosted our annual college and career fair on April 13th, and it was a, a success. Over 70 representatives for various colleges, universities, trade schools, and careers attended. Students and staff attended first period through lunchtime, and some, student, some staff reported it was the most diverse fair so far. Fifteen students from, of Pacheco Choir performed in the Merced County Honor Choir on April 8th and 9th. They performed at the Merced Theater in downtown and had a blast. Paul Kimball was UP, UOP, was the guest conductor, and these students got their chance to perform and learn music at the much higher level. They represented their school very well. We had our first round of love note session with approximately 50 students to learn relationship skills that will help with healthy relationships with Dr. Gen Jennifer Jones from Project Connect. 389 students, athletes, participated in sports this year with 117 earning WAC scholarship athlete status and 22 bringing three sport athletes. Junior Abby Pikes set a Nor Northern California record in softball, getting a base hit in 19 straight at bats during the month of April. She was selected she was selected athlete of the month along with track standout Joey Costa. Boys volleyball earned a trip to the playoffs falling uh, falling to Merced in the first round. Pacheco ASB hosted their first annual blood drive in over two years helping save lives throughout the valley. And that concludes my report. All right. All right. Great job. Thank you. Uh, this is your last meeting. So you need to tell us what you're going to do after uh, high school's over. So after high school, I was planning to attend the two years here in the Merced College and then transferring to Stanislaus and, or Fresno. And then I'm going to study to be, uh, I'm going to major in psychology to be a therapist for families. Wow, great. That is wonderful. Super. I hear you have a trip planned? Yeah, I'm going to Paris, Italy, and London Whoa. during the summer. That's cool. We're all jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank you for um, being with us this year. You guys did it. You and your cohort from Pacheco did, or you're Pacheco. Yeah, I'm Pacheco. Your, your, your cohort from Las Manas High School, sorry, um, did a great job and keeping us informed of what's happening at all our schools, uh, at the, both high schools. So we really want to appreciate that. We have a little thank you gift for you. And so thank you for all you've done. And we really appreciate uh, you being here. And uh, good luck in all your future endeavors. Thank you so much. And of course, as always, if you've got any homework to do, you can skedaddle or you can spend the rest of the night with us if you want. But thank you. Next up, California School Employees Association report. So seeing no one come forward, there's no report from them. Uh, Los Spanish Teachers Association report. I got a text message saying that Jennifer is out of town at another meeting, so she will not be with us tonight, so there's no report from the uh, Los Spanish Teachers Association. Next up, the superintendent's report, Dr. Marshall. Okay, I'm on. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Lorena Flosco. We have a teacher there, uh, Mrs. Roy's class, actually. They sent us a nice thank you letter, letters, uh, for the symphony that we had uh, recently. And what they were thanking us for is that in the past, we've contributed to a, a portion of it. But this year, we've picked up the whole cost. And I think Dr. Teachin announced that, that we had paid for that. So it was nice when we came in. We had this nice thank you letters from the students. So we really appreciate that. Uh, also, we got a good report from uh, the county office about Lorena Falasco, where I guess one of our foster families basically called and uh, sang the school's praises. So and too often, like, we always hear the bad things, but it's nice to get some good press and some um, positive feedback every now and then. So good job, Lorena Falasco. Last month, uh, I want to start with an, an apology. I forgot last month to report that at Los Spanish Junior High, their FFA chapter was officially installed into the National, Associ National Organization as the middle school chapter. 
uh, there are very few schools in the area that have that distinction, and uh, we need to highlight that. And uh, we had the pleasure, myself and board members, we went to the, um, the ag complex at the school, and that was a very fun experience. We also had the, uh, the fair recently in, in Los Banas, and many of our kids got a chance to show their projects. That was enjoyable. And I want to say kudos to the teachers and the students that made that happen. I mean, it was you know, difficult to kind of get that back and going after two years, but um, I think the kids really appreciated doing that. Uh, we had our pentathlon recently from Merced County, and we had several big winners in the district. Westside Union, they won, uh, and Tammy Schultz, the coach, they won first place overall and first place in Super Quiz. Lorena Falasco was also a big winner. They won second place overall. Miano placed fifth out of 11 teams. And in addition to that, we had uh, students at Mercy Springs and Creekside to win um, individual awards. So, I mean, our schools did very, very well there. We also learned that our AD at Los Banos High School, Mr. Barcellas, he won a prestigious award, the Sue uh, Kamiyama Award. A very prestigious award, and he won that. Um, you know, that's a big accolade for the district. This month, May is a very, a lot of recognitions this month. Uh, we recognized our administrative assistants, our principals, our teachers, our school lunch work employees, and our school nurses. Next week, we're celebrating our classified employees. Now, uh, for a twist, uh, we're going to be doing job shadowing. I think that uh, we're we all going to be, some of us going to be uh, doing shadowing different classified employees. Dr. Calcidia, so I think you'll be doing security. Am I correct that? Uh... <laughs> 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 all right. You'll be, uh, yeah, you'll be, she's doing security. Uh, where are you going to be? I'll be the bus driver. Okay, Mills will be driving the bus, bus driver. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and then I think for, in my assignment, uh, I'll be uh, shadowing Mike Madrano at, at Lorena Falasco. So I'll get to be the head custodian on that day. So <laughs> we're looking forward to it. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. Um, and we have an update on Lofton Stadium. I mean, the project, this is big news. It's been DSA approved. So what happens next after that part, now that the DSA has approved it, there's still a few things we have to work out with the city. But once that's worked out, we can bid the project and move forward. So that's real big news. Lastly, as we approach the graduation season, we're going to again be assisting. Uh, they're going to have the sober graduation, and we'll be assisting with that as well. So that's, that's also good news that we're bringing back things and kind of getting back to some normalcy. Uh, finally, I think you'll hear later from uh, when we get to the consent calendar from the Boys and Girls Club. If anybody out there in the audience or watching us on uh, television, I have uh, four extra tickets to the Sip and Savor event. Uh, just e email um, Tina, email me, and um, it'll be a good event at the um, Merced College Los Banos campus. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. On to facilities report. All right, uh, Lofton is done, so I'll go, move to PHS Building Edition. Uh, currently, the construction is in framing and roofing process. Uh, at the same time, the contractors are trying to complete the electrical and plumbing. A project is going to be completed sometime in August. Uh, HME parking lot. The consultant is reviewing the last phase of the electrical PGE, and hopefully, we can bid out the project in two weeks. That's about it. Those two. All right. Any questions, the board? All right, thank you very much. Next item up is board member's report. Uh, we'll start with Ms. Moran. We switched it up a little, right? <laughs> so let me get my notes. Um, it is actually gonna be really short and simple. The end of the semester always brings a lot of uh, joy as folks are getting ready for graduation, right? And so I wanted to mention that I'm excited for scholarship nights, a lot of the events. Unfortunately, I would not be able to participate in graduations. I'm in a doctoral program, and I have my summer intensive. So just to be forthcoming, my heart is there. I wish I could be there, but definitely. So I wanted to say to all the graduates, uh, happy graduation and congratulations to the class of 2022. So um, I wish I could be there, and, and trust me, intensive sounds a little scary. So going barely into year two, so wish me luck for all the other folks that already have that uh, under their belt, right? So I think I'm, I'm being very naive in, in what I'm going to be walking into, right, into my year two and three. So thank you so much, and have a good uh, night. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Mr. Lieb. Thank you. So <clears throat> I attended all five days of the county fair, 
uh, April 27th through the 1st, and I really enjoyed seeing all the children and in Little Hands exhibit as well as the rides, and especially um, San Luis High School students volunteering at Henry Miller Farm. That was a lot of fun to see that. So um, I especially enjoy the, the smiles on the faces of all the 4-H and FFA students when they show and sell their animals. Um, it, it's a bit sad when I see the tears from the little kids when they're selling their lambs and their rabbits. But um, all in all, they're, they're all smiling at the end. Um, and um, a, big, a big shout out to all of the supporters and people who purchase the animals every year. Um, there's many, too many to mention, but um, lots of money is being made for these um, students. They spend a lot of time and energy raising these animals and um, they get something for it at the end. They, they learn a lot. Um, so, and congratulations to um, all the 4-H and FFA students, including our new chartered FFA program at Los Banos Junior High. And like Dr. Marshall said, we went to their um, little, uh, uh, showed, us, showed us the whole program. They gave us these, these towels. So I really appreciate that. And uh, Diolinda Brazil and uh, Adam Jacobo. So um, hopefully uh, by next year, we can have a similar program at Creekside. So, uh, congratulations also to former Pacheco High graduate Gia Rodoni. Um, yesterday, Los Spanos girls softball played Pacheco, and prior to the game, they retired Gia's number seven. Um, and uh, her whole family was there, and she went to Baylor and received a degree in nursing and is currently working on her LVN. And um, lastly, thank you to the Los Spanos Rotary Club for donating $1,500 to Sober Grad Night. Uh, the Los Banos Police Activities League, led by Noah Jones, is always looking for donations. And that's the end of my report. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Martinez. Okay. Well, welcome for joining us this evening. Um, and accolades to all those uh, that had won awards. It's amazing. Uh, I attended uh, uh, the EO at a graduation over at Pacheco High School. And it's always a joy to see the faces and the smiles of those kids graduating. Um, aside from that, uh, in closing, I just want to encourage all of us to just finish this challenging year that we've had uh, in the spirit of unity and bond of peace. And congratulations to all the 2022 graduates this year. And that's all I got. All right. Thank you. Mr. Munoz. Hello, everybody. Okay, we start off with uh, Los Banos Junior High. The Ag FFA chapter was officially installed into the FA National Organization on Sunday, March 27th. And we'd like to congratulate them on the recognition of their new chapter. Again, here's the towel they gave us, the presentation. On April 21st, I attended a brief presentation over Los Banos Junior High campus met with the new FA officers, and really enjoyed viewing their projects. Garden area consisted of broccoli, peppers, and plants. Also viewed how they, how they raised and prepared meat chickens to be presented at the Merced County Spring Fair. Very interesting on how they were fed to make weight, to make a certain weight to be presented. Next, I got to view wood projects, which were little planter boxes filled with different, different kinds of succulents from Home Depot. I attended the fair to visit the ag facilities and look at the animals that were being displayed, sheep, goats, lambs, and cows, and I did a lot of reading on each of them. I would like to congratulate the Los Banos High School new chapter, FFA chapter, on their award of the Merced County Spring Fair Grand Champions Poultry Meat Pen. Thank you. And that's for that. Uh, on my next project here. Okay, this is Pacheco High School. I attended the uh, UC Merced Parent Empowerment Program. Very interesting. I got to meet parents there was two classes. There was an English class and a Spanish class. Spanish class had 14 to 16 parents and students, 
And in the English class, we had from five to six, seven parents and students. Okay, on the beginning of the, of the, um, of the program was an intro of the Power and Parent Program to introduce parents to the, to the Parent Empowerment Program goals and objectives. That was at week one. Week two, April 14th, okay? Systems of higher education, okay? To provide parents with a better understanding of the difference and similarities between systems of higher education and degrees awarded to each system. Week three, Tuesday, April 21st. Pathway to Higher Education, AG. To provide parents with a better understanding of the AG requirements for admission to the UC or CSU system. Yeah, on week four, workshop four. Pathway to Higher Education, exams in higher education. Very interesting. They provide parents with a better understanding of the exams and higher education and admission to the UC and CSU systems. Okay, week five was financial aid. Provide parents with better understanding of financial aid and opportunities. Very interesting information that uh, we're working with our parents. I was really impressed how they have these programs and these parents show up. Tonight at 5.30, they had a graduation ceremony, which I guess we couldn't attend because we're here now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Saturday, they have a campus visit to provide graduating parents with an opportunity to experience and explore the U.S., I mean, the U.C., CSU, or private college university campus. And that is my report. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Ms. Benton. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to wish all of you students good luck in your finals. I know it's nerve-wracking right now, but you'll do fine. Just take a deep breath, and it'll be fine. Um, have a great summer, guys. You know, it's been a really long, arduous year, and you've done a wonderful job. So everybody kind of relax. Have a great summer, and let's come back and do it again. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ms. Smith. Okay. I just start my report by asking Gary Munoz, what do they feed the chickens to make them make weight? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are they feeding those chickens? <laughs> chicken feed. I would like to avoid that chicken. <clears throat> okay. Okay. You know, I didn't know there was two different types of chickens. There's one that lay eggs. And one that for and, meat. And just for me. Yeah. Okay. But when they feed these chickens, they, they got to feed them. Just so much, a lot so they carbs, can make huh? a certain weight. Yes, a lot of carbs. Yeah, yeah. a lot of carbs. <laughs> and okay. they have to make weight just to be shown. Wow, I've already given our red meat. I'm not sure what I'll do now with the chicken making weight. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got a problem with that. Anyway, I'd like to say Happy Nurses Week to all the Los Angeles Unified School District nursing and nursing staff. They provide a wonderful service to our students, and uh, we couldn't be here without them. They take care of the little ones. I also like to say that I had to visit every single Los Banos Junior High Tiger softball game because my granddaughter plays for them, and she went from hitting all strikes, and now she's actually hitting some balls. They had their last game tonight, so I did miss that one, but it's wonderful to see the work that the coaches have put in with those kids at the junior high school, so we really appreciate all the work that the coaches are doing with the kids out there. Uh, my second uh, granddaughter was on the track team. She went out there. She looks like an athlete. She couldn't run, but now she's invited to invitationals. So, again, the a credit goes to the coaches. Um, Grandma certainly isn't an athlete in any kind of way. So the girls have finished up really well. The team didn't do the best, but we're hoping for, you know, a better time next year. But more than that, they had fun. Um, and that was, that's all I, that I care about. Um, and I want to say that the Los Banas High School campus ROP students are coming to the hospital campus, and I get to work with them. And that's also another wonderful program this school puts forward in the health and uh, the nursing department. So I've had a chance to work with about eight of your students, and I really enjoy that. And they call me Miss Marlene, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, graduates, congratulations. This is going to be a wonderful year. Uh, you'll get to walk and have a ceremony this year, and everybody in town is looking forward to that. So have a nice summer. If I don't see you again before you all take off, and... and be well. All right. Thank you, Miss Marlene. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
basically, I I have a few repeats of what everybody said, so I'll, I don't want to say it again. Um, but the um, the junior high ag showcase was was a was a great uh, um, uh, presentation to us about what the uh, new program at the junior high school is doing. So that was great. And thank you very much for that invitation to do that. Um, congratulations to our bands uh, for their great performances at May Day. Um, there were lots of awards between the, the four groups that were there. And uh, of course, all of our ag students um, and uh, those uh, other ag students that never get mentioned. Um, if you walk through some of the exhibits, you see some of the electrical work, uh, you see uh, plumbing work and stuff like that. So those kids did a great job, a lot of blue ribbons in that area too. So not only uh, those that are students that are showing animals, but we also have some egg students that are doing other projects as well. And congratulations to everybody. Um, and I know everybody's excited to get back to the fair this year. So that was, that was a really cool thing. Um, I receive, um, what's called paw print, which is uh, from Los Banos High Schools and from their journalism department. And um, so every so often I'll receive uh, paw print and it'll have articles written by the students, which are very well done. And uh, the last, probably the last month, I think, um, almost, well, almost every one of them, uh, had recognition for our students at, from Los Banos High School. Uh, and I'd just like to mention uh, a few of the things that uh, they're doing and basically where they're going to college. Uh, it, it actually told, uh, listed the student's name, where they're going to college, their majors. And I'm not going to go through all of their names and majors and stuff, but I do want to mention um, some of the schools that uh, w was listed on all of these. UC Merced. CSU Bakersfield, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, UC Davis, Calvary State University Fresno, Baylor University, California State University San Jose, Chico, someone's going to the Air Force, University of Alabama, Merced College, California State University Long Beach, Oklahoma State, UC Santa Barbara, UCLA, UC Long Beach. I love this one. Pacific Coast Horseshoeing School. We need horseshoeing people, so that's great. Um, UC Berkeley, North Dakota State University, and the University of Mary. And that's just a few of them, um, because there's obviously many more students that there. And, and some of their majors, psychology, pre-med, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, ag communication, forensic science, uh, criminal justice, nursing, communications, yeah. ag education, biology, neurobiology, speech and language pathology, human resources, veterinary technology, criminal justice and psychology. We must be doing something right. I mean, this is pretty impressive. And you know, this is just a few of the students at Los Banos High School. I'm sure Pacheco High School can uh, wow us with just as many of students that are going to uh, upper education institutions. So congratulations to all of them. That, that takes a lot of work. And so congratulations to all of them. Some of these are great majors that we're going to be needing in the future or needing now. So uh, that's wonderful. And uh, congratulations to all of our, our students that are graduating this year. Um, it's hard to believe I'm, I could probably say this and Deborah is probably the only one up here that really knows this for sure. It's hard to believe there's only 15 more days of school left. Um, it's, it's, this year went by fast. It's been one of the most craziest years that we've ever gone through. And uh, I know that you all are going, I'm sure glad it's over because it was one heck of a ride. Um, so thank everybody for making this work um, from all the way, you know, administration, teachers, all of our classified staff, you all made it work. And it, it was a, a crazy ride and we really appreciate everything you've done to make this a great year and give us those students that are going to those great schools. So appreciate that. Thank you so much. I had a quote, um, a couple of quotes at my, in my report last month. And I actually got a few people that emailed and texted me and said they really liked it. They thought it was cool. So <laughs> I, I have another quote that I'm going to share with everybody tonight. 
and it's not about music, um, but it's about education. And um, some people are going to agree with this, and some people aren't. But I'm going to I'm going to share it anyway. Prepare your child. Uh, pre- yeah, prepare your children for the road. Don't prepare the road for your children. When we clear the road for a child, we make their life too easy. We don't allow them to build life coping skills they'll need down the road to handle life's hard realities. The surest way to make life hard for your child is to make it too easy. And that's my report tonight. All right, on to new business, school site reports. Dr. Marshall, would you like to introduce sure. the first one? All right, we have uh, three sites this evening. Um, tonight, we will hear from Creekside, Crossroads, and San Luis High School. Welcome, Ms. Moreno. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Carolina Moreno, Creekside Junior High School's principal, at least for the remainder of the school year. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank my staff for the great work that they have done this year. I truly work with a remarkable, dedicated, and caring staff. I know that this has been a very difficult year for our staff, our community, and our children. We have all undergone some sort of trauma the past few years. With that said, at Creekside, we have put in place many different things that our teachers and our counselors have done throughout the year to address our students' needs. Creekside Junior High School counselors have prepared a presentation to show some data collected this year and some successes. But before our counselors make, our presenta- make their presentation, I would like to share with you an experience from yesterday that shows one example of, our, of the trauma some of our students have gone through this year. Part of my joy as a principal is being able to greet my students in front of the school. Yesterday, as a student walked in the gate, I greeted her, pulled her aside, and told her that I had missed her as she had been absent multiple days. I asked her why she had been out, and she proceeded to say that her father had passed away. I told her that I was sorry and that I understood her pain, as I had just lost my dad in January. We hugged, we cried, and we are now providing services for her. This is just one trauma that our students have of one student. There are so many others. It is more important now, more than ever, that we provide social emotional learning for our students, along with our counselor services. Please welcome our awesome counselors, Mr. Franco, Ms. Andrade, and Ms. Ortega. And then we do have a presentation. Good evening. We have a short presentation, like Ms. Moreno said, uh, just highlighting some of the things happening at uh, Creekside in the counseling department. Uh, my name is Mr. Franco. We have um, Ms. Ortega Dietrich here and Ms. Um, Andrade that's going to be presenting uh, this evening. Good evening and thank you. Along with our vision at Creekside, inspiring, empowering, and educating our children, our, our counseling curriculum has been, um, we have been working with the ASCA model and through ASCA and through CAS. And we have been covering the three domains of the social-emotional, college career, academic achievement. And to highlight a few from our tier, our multi-tier, multi-domain, we have been working with our students. Um, Highlighting tier one, we have implemented Character Strong along with teacher lessons, um, covering, again, the three domains. Um, We also have covered the college career planning five, six year plan. Uh, We offer tutoring workshops. We also have virtual counseling. Um, We also have the lunch bunch wellness fair. Um, In tier two, we are also working on the Aspens, which are the annual student progress notifications for students under 2.0. We have been working with student success plans. 
Uh, we also been working with PBIS, restorative justice practices, along with the second step program. Our tier three, we have been um, conducting SRAs, um, home visits, check-ins, referrals, and providing resources for those in need, and also our short-term individual counseling sessions. So on this graph, you can see the student uh, self-risk risk assessments that we've completed in the last three years. You can't see it there, um, but in 2016, we had about eight SRAs, or self-risk assessments. Uh, 17, we had about 10, and then we had about eight again in 2018. Um, and here you can see in 19, 20, 25. And then last, uh, when we went to distance learning, uh, we did wellness checks. Um, so we weren't aware of a lot of things happening, but when kids came, came back this year, you can see on the graph there, 2021-22, uh, we've done up-to-date 59 self-risk um, self assessments. Now here we can see the number of 7th graders that we have serviced. Um, our number is pretty high for 7th graders. Um, at the beginning of the school year, we did have um, a high demand for those services in that grade um, due to um, that transition from 6th grade to 7th grade. Um, for 8th graders, we had 120. Um, we have seen these kids multiple times, so this is just the number of wellness checks we did. Next, we can see the topics of um, some of the group counseling we've done. Anxiety is one of the highest one. Um, social anxiety was, a, was one that we worked on a lot. Um, again, a lot of the kids were having a hard time socializing again, um, you know, just coming to school. So um, we did see about 100 students, like 10 groups throughout the year. Self-esteem was another one that um, we worked on a lot, um, along with social skills, healthy habits. Um, a lot of these kids... Um, need help with their sleeping, um, with their eating habits, um, social media habits. So uh, we've worked out in a lot of these topics. For the academic individual counseling, um, this is just a rough number, but uh, for seventh grade, we've met for, with about 182 students and parents. Uh, for eighth graders, about 327 students and parents, and these students, uh, these meetings are for students that have, that are at, considered at risk or below 2.0 GPA. And we do honor National Awareness Month. Currently, May is Mental Health Awareness, and this week was California Student Mental Health Week. And so as you see our students um, engaging in activities, Today, our school resource officer was there making kindness cards with them, and they were super excited because they got to get stickers from our officer. Um, so it has been a really great week for these students. We've also attended a few colleges this year. This school year, we went to UC Merced, Fresno State, and um, California State University, Monterey Bay. And so I'd like to end with a, a miniature video of um, an EDGE program that Fresno State does provide. Um, and they do learn how to come out of their shell and become leaders. And I'll let the video show you the rest of what they learn.
our kids really had fun. We d we were able to take two uh, on two different Saturdays, about seventy students. So um, we all had fun. So as I prepare for my last end of the year school year at Creekside, I would like to thank students, parents, staff, and the school board and our community for support and trust given to me during the past six years during my tenure at Creekside Junior High's principal. In my heart, Creekside will always be my home. Thank you. I just, I just have one comment. And those chickens that they're jumping at, those weren't meat. They were not they meat. Were not, they, they, they were not, not meat, meat chickens. They, they were not, they they were not meat chickens. So we learned something, yes, obviously. Thank you very much. That was pretty cool. Appreciate it. Welcome. And I get to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. I'm Barbie Severance, and I am the principal of Crossroads Alternative Ed Center. I must say that this year did not start like any other year for us. We were in the midst of moving from our old facility to a larger facility across town. And as with all moves, the scheduling was a challenge. Our office worked out of the boardroom for a month, and our teachers worked from home and out of boxes to start the new year with their students. In the midst of that, we received the seven pages of ed code deletions and additions to independent studies programs contained in the trailer bill. The changes in ed code went to the very core of the operation of independent studies programs. And to top it all off, all of the changes were auditable. All of the staff, seven teachers, one learning director, and our office manager sat together in the boardroom. We read through the new requirements, and we were done, when we were done saying, what are they thinking? <laughs> we got to work. Together, we developed new documentation, read through master agreements to confirm every component was included, and developed new systems to make sure all paperwork would be easily accessible to the auditor this spring. We also reached out beyond our own site. Dr. Ritchie brought the updated board policy to you last fall for approval, and Apex Learning worked with us also and created a customized report for us to print weekly showing exactly how many minutes every student works, on which class, and on what day. And our custodian put in long hours every day, cleaning up after the construction workers to help our move happen a little, more soon, little sooner and a little more smoothly. All of this was done while simultaneously starting the school year in July. Then the phone started ringing off the hook as many people in the district office could tell you because they were answering them. They didn't go straight to the boardroom. The families were concerned over returning to in-person learning at the comprehensive sites and they were seeking enrollment with us. Our wait list grew every day. I say all of this to showcase the incredible group of people who call Crossroads home. All of our teachers stepped up they sold their prep to be able to take on additional students beyond the ed code requirements that we have for student to teacher ratio. And we hired an additional office clerk to help with the massive amounts of paperwork that were piling up from the additional students. As a reward for all of this hard work, we have a record graduation numbers this year. I am proud to say that we have already had 39 early graduates, and our ceremony this year will be of the record size. And about those seven pages of audible, auditable <laughs> changes to independent studies programs, we as a staff can proudly tell you that when we were audited on May 3rd, there were no findings. That is thanks to the hard work of our office staff and of our teachers who diligently make sure that everything is signed and everything is filled in on every single form. So I want to just commend all of that staff for all of what they have done this year. Thank you. My mic wasn't on. I said, Dr. Severance, thank you very much. Sorry about that. 
Welcome, Mr. Meath. Welcome. It's good to be back in here. It's been, what, two years? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, good evening, board members. Uh, my name is Chan Mias, if you don't know. I'm principal of San Luis High School. It's been a crazy but very successful first year back with students for in-person learning. And I think we all know and can agree that distance learning for the past two years has been really rough and has had a rough negative impact for students. And I am proud of the work that the students at San Luis High have produced this year. And I'm proud of my staff for the positive impact that they are working to make in the lives of our students. There's a lot of positives to share, too many to count, no matter how small or large, we really try to recognize students for successes, small and large, to help build confidence and continue their growth mindset. And so I'd just like to share a few highlights. So in athletics, in the fall of 2021, our flag football team, which is co-ed, earned the first place trophy in the Sequoia High Football Classic. So here's the trophy right here to prove that, you know, we, we, we got first place. <laughs> and back in 2019, the fall before the pandemic, we also won the first place tournament in the Yosemite High School uh, football tournament in Merced, California. And we compete with four to five other continuation high schools. So I'm proud to say for the students, we're back-to-back -back champions and, and way to go. They're great. They're great. The kids, they work hard in. Kudos to my coaches, Mr. Lawrence Mitchell and Mrs. Sumner, who collaborate and they work together, together to coach all of our sports uh, here at San Luis. Community service opportunities, and as Jean mentioned a few weeks ago, we concluded Fair Week. Since 2006, uh, San Luis students, led, led by teacher and assistant principal Karen Ellington, students who are selected to be in her fair class, who must demonstrate good attendance, little to no discipline issues, and are making great academic progress get to participate. They're trained and they provide tours for the elementary schools during fair week. I invited Dr. Marshall to join me for one of the tours and I was thankful he had time in his busy schedule uh, to check it out. And Gene Lieb, who happened to be there, had his camera and Dr. Marshall uh, was able to, to participate in the tour with Miano Elementary and uh, take a picture of petting some of the animals. So I'm thankful for that. Kudos to Miss Ellington, Mrs. Heather McBride, my behavior support aide, and Kat, Kat Lightsey, I think I, I hope I said her name right, from Henry Miller. They've been doing this since 2006, so it's been a great tradition for San Luis students to continue to develop their leadership skills. Very proud. And on Wednesday, yesterday, we sent eight juniors uh, to Camp Green Meadows with Volta and Henry Miller Elementary Schools for camp. Students are recommended by my teachers for this honor. As you know or not know, cabin leaders maintain supervision of sixth grade students, and you know that can be a handful this time of year <laughs> at camp, ensuring student safety and promoting positive behavior. They assume a wide variety of leadership roles that include assisting the teachers and naturalists on science activities, leading recess activities, enforcing the discipline system, and being a positive role model and leader. I would like to thank Henry Miller, Principal Mrs. Raines, and Volta, Principal Mr. Thomas. Oh, oh there you are, Matt. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna thank you because now that we're back for in-person learning for keeping this tradition going, uh, for providing a very, I think, and, and the staff, we agree, it's a very important leadership development opportunity for San Luis students. And this tradition started, I want to say, six, six years ago when Mr. Sowersby was principal at Mercy Springs and when Mr. Waltman uh, was principal at Henry Miller. And it's been a great experience for all of our students, students who participate, they get an evaluation letter of where they did well, where they can grow. And we encourage our students to keep that and add it into their portfolio for their resume as they proceed with their adult life. So very cool. Next up, award winners. So we have three students from Las Benas Unified, one from San Luis, one from Pacheco, one from Pacheco High, and one from San, uh, Las Benas High, 13 students overall in Merced County who were recognized at a special ceremony on April 29th through the Association of California School Administrators Every Student Succeeding Program. This program, which is new in its first year, 
This honors students who have overcome challenges that may be related to school, family, medical, or other hardship, and the educators who support them along the way. For San Luis, we had Narissa Escobar, who was a previous Las Penas High Tiger, who transferred to San Luis uh, as a result of getting behind on academic credits. With grit, perseverance, and with a growth mindset, along with the support of her teachers and the support staff at San Luis, she will be walking the ceremony next month with her fellow classmates with her diploma in hand, and she plans to attend Merced College Las Panos in the fall. And uh, at the breakfast event, she received a certificate and a duffel bag filled with goodies. And on behalf of the San Luis staff, we congratulate her and all the students at that banquet who received the recognition that they deserve. So very proud. I just received the photo slide from Dr. Audrey Garza from Merced County. I'll be sending that to Dr. Marshall. It'd be great for you to take a look and see all the kids who earned uh, an award. Now, speaking of my staff, San Luis, I would like to take this last opportunity uh, for this presentation to uh, recognize them for the hard work that they have done this year. Like I said earlier, it's been a crazy year. I mean, students haven't been in school for two years, so you didn't know what you were going to get. And so uh, I'm thankful for Mr. Montemurro uh, for being here. And I was I shared with him that I had a presentation and he volunteered to come here and just hang out and see, see it. So thank you, Paul. So my team at San Luis, they are a true dedicated team to help the lives of students, and I'm very lucky to be the principal there. So I want to name recognize, I want to give them name recognition, and I'll start with my office, and that's Mrs. Susan Aguilla, Sue, Mrs. Graciela Sanchez, media specialist, Mrs. Paulina Vaca, the security team of Mr. Lawrence Mitchell and Mr. John Calderon, my behavior support assistant, Mrs. Heather McBride, my custodian, Mr. Ahmad Brown, my mental health clinician, Mr. Adrian Cortez. Now to my teachers for science and math, Mrs. Lisa Grant. She's out on a workman's comp at the moment. We hope to get her back real soon. And so Mrs. Kate Gaines has been our long-term sub this year since November, has done a great job. World history and American government and coach, Mrs. Tracy Sumner. English and art, Mrs. Katie Malcolm. English and English language development, Mrs. Christy Huff. Integrated math and assistant principal, 5050, Ms. Karen Ellington. U.S. history and economics, Mr. Paul Montemurro. Inclusion specialist, Mrs. Carlene Hazen. Drums and guitar, we get to share him with the Las Banish Junior High, Mr. Andrew Soli, our resident rock star. Uh, and our psychologist, Mr. Seraphine Lomelli. The names that I just mentioned, they are the heart and soul of San Luis High School, and I'm blessed to have them there, and the kids are, bene are benefiting because of them. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Moreno, uh, Dr. Severance, Mr. Mias, thank you very much. This was great information. We really appreciate it. You guys did a great job, and it was information that uh, – we like to hear, hear what's going on at our site. So thank you very much for being here tonight and giving us that presentation. New business item B, new job description, Director of Elementary Education, Dr. Calzadias. The Director of Elementary Education position is um, a new job description slash position that is coming about due to a reorganization of the Ed Services Division. The current Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Education, Ms. Mastrangelo, is, is retiring. And so her position is, is being eliminated and actually being split into two director positions. We feel that this reorganization will better meet the needs of staff and students. So it's recommended that the board approve the Director of Elementary Education, Certificated Management position, and job description. Are there any questions for Dr. Calzadias? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. We've got a motion by uh, Mr. Martinez, seconded by Ms. Benton, to approve the new job description, Director of Elementary Education. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
and it passes unanimously. Thank you. On to item C, new job description, Director of Secondary Education, Dr. Kelsey Diaz. This is the second part of that reorganization. Um, Director of Elementary Ed, Director of Secondary Education, both of these positions will work collaboratively with the Chief Academic Officer and will help in setting the course for the curricular direction for the district. It's recommended that the board approve the Director of Secondary Education, Certificated Management position, and job description. Any questions for Dr. Calzadias? If not, could I please have a motion? Got a motion by a member Smith, seconded by member Lieb to approve the new job description of the Director of Secondary Education. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And it's carried unanimously. Thank you. Item D, new job description, manager, <laughs> facilities, and special projects placement on the salary schedule also, and that is also Dr. Calzadias. This position is also the result of a reorganization and to better serve the needs of the department and that department being FOT. It's also aligned with the traje trajectory that the district will be moving over the next several years in terms of facilities needs. It's recommended that the board approve the manager of facilities and special projects position and job description and placement on the director and supervisory salary schedule as that is at a range 26. All right, any questions for Dr. Calzadias? All right, seeing none, need a motion, please. We got a motion by Member Smith, seconded by Member Moran, to approve the new job description of the manager of facilities and special projects and the accompanying salary schedule. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And it is carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, item D, Dr. Calzadias. I'm on a roll tonight. <laughs> um, as you know, each bargaining cycle, the parties that are bargaining have to submit their proposal um, to the the board and it's recommended that the board accept this initial bargaining proposal submitted by the Los Banas Teachers Association. Your acceptance of the proposal will follow a public hearing. All right. Uh, with that, we'll open the public hearing on the initial bargaining proposal of Los Banas Teachers Association at 8.05. Is there any comments to our public hearing? Seeing no one come forward, we will close the Public hearing at 8.05. Are there any questions for Dr. Calzadias? Seeing none, I need a motion, please. So moved. Hang on a second. Motion by Member Benton, seconded by Member Smith, to uh, adopt the proposal from the Los Banas Teachers Association for their initial bargaining for the 2022-2023 school year. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? And it is carried unanimously. Thank you. All right, item 10, the consent calendar. Uh, there are a number of items on this, uh, what we call consent. I'm sorry? Oh, oh, yes, Dr. Sir. Marshall, okay, I'm sorry. Yes. No, no problem. We have uh, some speakers. There's an item on the, in the, consent, the, the Boys and Girls Club, the MOU, and they want to speak to that. They want to make sure that they didn't get a chance. To, they want to talk about it. Nothing against it, but just information. Okay. Okay. Um, is that okay with everybody since it's not on the agenda? Yes. Okay. Come forward. Yeah, good evening, board. My name is Zachary Cruz. I am the program supervisor for LEAP. And I just wanted to quickly introduce the new CEO for the Boys and Girls Club, Ms. C. Lee. You have an MOU uh, for up for approval. Uh, that will um, uh, contract a district with uh, the Boys and Girls Club to run a summer program in July. So I just thought it'd be prudent. Take a second to introduce Ms. Lee. Good Thank you, Zach. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Board of Trustees, Deborah, for the work that you do. Um, thank you to our administrator, and our educators for all that you do. 
Um, I would say that every one of us can probably think of that one teacher that opened doors for us. So thank you for the hard work. I know it's ch challenging, sometimes thankless, um, but it makes a difference. And so you are planting seeds every single day. Um, so I want to thank you and congratulate you on a year well done, um, especially through such a traumatic time. Um, tonight, I wanted to spend a few minutes, uh, again, to highlight the partnership uh, between the Boys and Girls Club and the Los Panos Unified School District. With that, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Marshall for your leadership, Zach as well, um, and the City of Parks and Recreation along with Sutter Health and the community in establishing a site here for the Boys and Girls Club. We know that there's a need uh, for young people. We've heard it from parents. We've heard it from educators. We heard it from the young people that there's more that we can do for them beyond the school bells. Boys and Girls Club's mission is, to be, is basically to provide a positive, safe environment for our young people to become productive, young citizens, contributing members of our community. The Boys and Girls Club is not a standalone entity. We are a part of a national organization, the Boys and Girls Club of America, that has over 4,000 chapters across the country and over two dozens of curriculum that are nationally recognized and utilized throughout the state. So when we look at the Boys and Girls Club and will it thrive and survive, it has for the, hun the last 100 years, and I will guarantee that it will continue to operate in the next 100. Here locally, our Boys and Girls Club was established in Merced, the city of Merced, uh, about 20 years ago uh, by a local couple who felt it was important to create a safe space for young people, a beacon of hope, a home away from home. And so that was when uh, a task force that consisted of local um, stakeholders as well as law enforcement that established this organization. As you know, um, the summertime is a difficult time for young people. Families are usually working, parents are working, Kids are usually left home by themselves. That's when um, increase in crime happens among juveniles, as well as the learning loss that has occurred. And st statistically speaking, we know that that uh, delays families, especially marginalized families, a lot more than others sometimes. So we're really fortunate that um, Dr. Marshall and the team has looked to the Boys and Girls Club to help fill that gap. And so we, are, we don't want to duplicate services we definitely want to find a value proposition for the community. And one way of doing that is to host a three-week summer camp this summer here in Los Panos. And so in partnership with the LEAP program, um, this thing wants to kick off additional like um, bass sound, so I'm so sorry about that. Um, but we're really excited to be able to deliver a 10-hour program per day for three weeks. Um, we know that by the time we get our young people, sometimes they're tired, they're hangry, right? Um, and that we have to find unique ways to engage them. So we do it by playing and playing by learning and learning to play. And so during our summer camp, we will be uh, launching our summer brain game, which basically embeds the academic components into playing arts, crafts, science, the whole nine yard. And we will also be adding a reading program. We know that in Merced County, at least 60% of our young people are, are not reading at grade level, and we want to come in and provide support in a community-based organization type way to leverage um, uh, the support um, that I know that's already happening in the school system. So that will be coming to you this summer. I am open to any questions that you may have. I do have flyers here for you just kind of marketing our program. Um, and we are working through the details right now. I hope that um, you will look at our MOU and approve it. Uh, but then I also have an invitation to our open house that's taking place, excuse me, taking place on May 31st at 5.30 in Merced. And the idea is to debut our partnership as well as a summer camp for our young people so that way they can channel their energy in a positive way in a positive environment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my apologies. I didn't realize that you were speaking 
to an agenda item, which is perfectly in line of what we're supposed to be doing. So when I, when I, when you first said they were coming up, I didn't realize they were speaking to an agenda item. So my apologies for not understanding okay. that. So thank you very much. And are there any questions? Sounds like a great program. Thank you. This is wonderful. All right. With that, uh, we have the consent calendar in front of us and, uh, that contains a number of items that, uh, we just vote on in one motion. And uh, it saves a lot of time for reading a lot of the minutes and other crazy things that we do. So um, with that, are there any pools on tonight's consent calendar? All right. Since seeing no pools, uh, I want to entertain a motion to accept the consent calendar as presented. We have a motion by Mr. Martinez, seconded by Ms. Smith, and I should restate that it's the percent calendar with the one correction on the um, uh, certificated employment report um, that was uh, mentioned earlier about the change in the, in the agenda. So with that, um, it is a roll call vote. Tina? Ms. Benton? Yes. Mr. Lead? Yes. Mr. Martinez? Yes. Ms. Moran? Yes. Mr. Munoz? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Perra? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Next item is the report of our closed session action. Ms. Benton. Pupil case number 44919-2216 is expelled for the current and fall semester of the 22-23 school year. Pupil Case number 91919065661 is expelled for the remainder of the 21-22 school year. Pupil case number 5531294 is expelled for one calendar year. Pupil is to contact the Office of Student Discipline for readmission following the period of expulsion for a review of attendance, credits, and or grades, behavior, and recommended counseling. The student is referred to Valley Community Day School. All right, thank you. That action was taken. Uh, we had a motion by Member Benton, seconded by Member Munoz. Uh, voting aye. Were Binted, Lee, Martinez, Moran, Munoz, Pereira, and Smith. There were no no's, no absentees. It passed unanimously. We had three other items in closed session, and those were all non action items, so uh, we didn't do anything else. Discussion, <laughs> information, and future agenda items. Anybody have anything? No. Seeing none, I would I, just. I have one thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we recently, uh, we had some principal vacancies that we uh, filled, and uh, we want to introduce the peak. They're here tonight, so I'm going to turn over to Dr. Cal's ideas. It's my pleasure to introduce the three individuals that have been selected to lead Grasslands Elementary, Westside Union Elementary, and Creekside Junior High. These individuals have participated in an extremely rigorous interview process consisting of three rounds of interviews. The interview panel included representatives from school sites, our labor groups, and the district office. I would like to introduce Maggie Ordunas, principal of Grasslands Elementary. <laughs> April Lotta, principal at Westside Union Elementary. <laughs> and Taiwan Lawrence, principal at Creekside Junior High. Congratulations to all of you, and we look forward to many good things to come. Congratulations, and uh, welcome aboard. I know we had a couple of you have been here before. Mr. Lawrence, you're new to us. Welcome, and uh, looking forward to great things coming out of our new schools, our, our, our new leadership at our new schools. Um, I know I speak for the, for the members of the board here. Um, it's the end of the school year, and the next three weeks... I think my calendar is like almost every night's got something going on. And thank you for all the invites. We really appreciate it. Um, we're going to try to make as many as we can. And um, we look forward to seeing all the great things that ha are happening at the end of the school year and all the accolades that are going to be placed upon all of our students and uh, staff. So with that, thank you very much. Safe travels home, 
and see you next month. Good night.